Well, welcome to this next tutorial on now rail and today we're going to be looking at using a gt911 capacitive touchscreen to build our own control panel so if you don't like wiring these things are fantastic let's take a look at what's on the desktop so here's my capacitive touchscreen um, what i've done is i've sellotaped it to a piece of paper just to build my own, I've drawn a sort of a mini track diagram. As you can see, I've got four turnouts. There are six wires that come from this little connector that connect over here to the ESP32. And that is all the wiring that is required. It is a very simple thing. Now these uh, capacitive touchscreens, they're very cheap. Let's just have a look at where I buy them from on AliExpress. So, as always, I'll be using the resource page for NowRail on the uh, Digital Town website. Going to nip down to the GT911 touchscreen functions. Obviously, we've got a picture of one of these boards. The actual unit, these are what you often get on the front of some higher end uh, LCD touchscreens. They're very often found on car satellite uh, sat nav systems, uh, the sort of the built in ones, and they're the sort of high quality screen that you would get on the front of your mobile phone. Now you need the screen and you also need what's called an FPC connector for the ribbon cable. So let's have a look at where we get these from. I've put some links in. So I get mine off AliExpress. And if we go on them, you can see that these things come in all sorts of sizes. The ones that you are looking for are like these ones where they have the GT 911 driver. That is the system that I've built into NowRail. As you can see, these things come in a variety of sizes. What's that? 126 by 210. I believe there are some that are even bigger than that. There we are, 10.2 down here. The great thing about these, though, when you get into them, um, even when you're looking at sort of these 10 inch ones, you know, they're not expensive. That's a pretty reasonable price for these items. By the time you've bought the other component that comes with it, it's going to be about £3. Um, put some shipping in, whatever. Let's imagine the whole thing's going to cost you £13 or £14 for the entire setup. That's not bad when you see how easy this is to set up and just how much you can do with it. So that's the product that we're looking at. Let's now look at how we integrate them. So here we have a copy of NowRail. This is version 0 0.4, and uh, which is the latest version as of when I'm doing this video. So let's just save this, and we're going to call it NowRail for GT911 test and then what I tend to like to do when it is saved as it comes back up I just change the sketch name so that I know that I'm working on this right to enable the GT911 functions the first thing that you need to do is go to the user setup. You need to uncomment the wire library and then uncomment the definition for the GT911. And then we've got two other items that we're going to uh, uncomment. So this particular line. 0x5d is the hex address of the GT911 screen. Uh, it's using the wire library, so everything has an address. I've then got GT911 touch buttons, and I've set that to 30. That's the default on NowRail. That is, if you like, the number of 
buttons that you can set on the screen. Now, obviously, you can set this number, you know, if you want to change that to 100, obviously you can. You just got to be careful because the buttons are going to get closer together. So this number basically needs to vary depending on your screen, depending on how many turnouts you've got on your screen. Then we've got another one here, which is the GT911 touch radius. Now you'll see in a moment that when we set a point on the screen, obviously that point is to an absolute one pixel in any direction accuracy. The odds of you ever being able to touch that same point with your finger are pretty slim. So what this does is it gives a radius sort of around that point. It actually works in a box. And so 35 gives an area about five millimeters either side and above and below the touch point that you've sent you've set so imagine that you're now touching your finger inside a one square centimeter box um, so increasing this number the box gets bigger decreasing the box the number gets smaller that's all you need to do to start the configuration then all we need to do is add our screen now, before we can add, if you like, the software link, we need the hardware connection. On these screens, there is a tiny ribbon cable that comes off. And you can see just here a number one, number six. On this particular cable, it gives you the um, which uh, sort of strand of the cable, what it's connected to. Uh, you then can see the connector numbers coming off. So you've got a VCC, which connects to the ESP32 3.3 volts, ground to ground, obviously. SDA is connected to pin 21 on the ESP32 dev module that I'm using. Obviously, check your particular board because it could change. SCL on the dev module is pin 22. And then you've got a reset pin and an interrupt pin. Um, that you can connect to any suitable free pin. Um, though that is the pin setup, so this now is how we install it. Now on mine, I've set the reset pin to 15 and the interrupt pin to two, just because they were convenient on the way that I connected it. So we're gonna take this example and going back to the now rail, we're gonna to go to the first screen and after my layout initiate, we're just going to stick that line in. So that now means that basically the screen is ready to go. So as you can see, I have compiled the sketch and I've also got the sort of screen overlay so we can see both at the same time. So let's bring up the serial monitor. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start touching the screen at random. And you will see various touch points coming up. Uh, if we zoom into these, you start to see that what I have here is an X position and a Y position. Now, these values are being driven by one of the NowRail custom functions. So let's just go into the custom functions. And I actually think it's one right down the bottom from what I remember. Yeah, it is. So right at the bottom of this screen at the moment is a function called NowGT911Touch. And uh, yeah, it has a value of X. Uh, an X position and a Y position. Uh, this is receiving instruction. So whenever a touch comes on the actual screen here, uh, within now rail, it will automatically call this function uh, if it's there. If you've deleted it, obviously it won't call it. But the joy of this little function is it just displays the X position and the Y position and we can use that to very quickly create our button coordinates. So to add our virtual buttons, if I go back to the Digital Town site, there is a function called add GT911 button, and then it has an X position, a Y position, 
an accessory number and an integer for the first press and an integer for the second press. So let's copy this function across and uh, build our first button. I'm going to copy one of the examples across just to make life a little bit quicker. So get that out of the way. We have uh, we've initiated our screen. Let's look at adding our first button. Now, this is just a demo one, and it's using the coordinates 30555 to control accessory 2000, and it's always going to send a zero, whatever the press. Obviously, that's not going to work for this particular screen. So going back to the touch screen, let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. You can see that what I've got here is I've got a turnout here, number 100. I've got a turnout further down, sorry about the light shining on it, 101, 102, and then 103. And what I've done is I've drawn some little dots here where I would imagine touching the screen. So the first thing we're going to do, let's bring that serial monitor up so we can see what's going on. Let's clear the output. And I'm going to start touching this point here. And I'm going to touch it a few times. There we go. So I've got values here that are reading sort of 420, 423, 428, 427, 423. These things are very, very sensitive. So looking at a sort of a mid value, I think we're looking realistically at 423 for the X. And looking at the spread, I would think we're looking at about 77 for the Y. So going up to our function, what did I say? We got four two, was it four two three and seventy seven? So we're going to use that location four two three seventy seven, and its accessory number one hundred. Now, obviously, in DCC, um, that would be you know, your decoder number. If this is passing the accessory command to uh, DCC EX or something, if you're just using now rail to control the turnout, which you could be doing on an analog or DCC layout, you can call this number whatever you want. Um, and then what I'm going to do on this particular one, however, if on the first press of the button, it's going to send a zero on the second press of the button, it's going to send a zero. This is a feature that I do for all of my buttons. Some people want the ability to press the same point twice. And sort of the first press will change the track to one direction, second press will change it to the other direction. But once that's done, that is the entire setup done. So let's just delete that. Um, because obviously, that's now wrong for this item. Now what I'm going to do is go to my next point. Let's just uh, clear off the output first. Yeah, I've done my best attempt there. So we're looking at a value looks to me about, yeah, I'm going to go with 369 and 165. So I'm going to do a second copy of this. Three six nine one six five, and I'm going to put a one and a one because obviously the way I work it is if it's turning left, it's a zero, if it's turning right, it's a one. However, if we look back at our points panel, when we're turning right from 100, from 101, we can also be turning right. So that single point here could actually be controlling both of these turnouts at the same time if I want. So let's that add that into our code. So what we're going to do is make a copy of that. It's the same touch point. And all we're going to do now is change the address to 101. And once again, we can see in my world it's turning right. So I'm going to keep that 
as a one. So now that touch point when it's touched will actually trigger both of these items. I'm now going to clear the output again and I'm just going to touch this final point here. And again, looking at the averages that have come up on my screen, you know, um, if you look down here, we're looking at probably, what's that? That's going to be 310 and about 239. So 310 and 239. Let's copy that top one. Three ten, two three nine, and this time we're going to be turnout number one hundred one again. Let's get rid of that. Get rid of those two bits. That's it. That is those first two turnouts completely sorted. So I've now compiled the code and let's have a look at our output so bringing up the serial monitor i'm going to stretch this right up to the top and i'm going to just going to click anywhere now obviously if i touch in a norm in a non switch position all you'll get is the x and y if i now touch on this point here now you'll see the command has been sent five times. Now the reason for this is that now rail has tr transmitted the command. It hasn't got a response from a receiving unit to say that uh, it's received that command and has actioned it. So it repeats it five times. If I turn the receiver on, obviously I'm only gonna see this once. But what we're looking at here now is we can see that I touch the point and then it has sent accessory number 100 a command to move to position zero and obviously it's repeated that a number of times i'm going to clear the output and now i'm going to click that center button so now we see once again 100 got an instruction for one to turn right and uh, obviously we see that then we see uh, 101 got an instruction to turn right and then we'll see this intermediate repeating going through as it repeats each one five times but as you can see with those simple lines of code that is all that is required to send the command to the receiving station now that receiver could be DCC EX that it would now have passed these commands on to your DCC system to use a conventional sort of accessory decoder or you could have passed it to one of the um, now rail receivers and that would have processed the command controlling either a servo or a solenoid depending how you want to set it up. So that's basically how the GT911 touchscreen is used. Now, in this example, let's be honest, no expense has been spared because no expense has been spent. This is a piece of A4 paper with some lines drawn on it. What we can do though is now integrate this with some LEDs to produce something far more spectacular. So here's a panel that I've built earlier. Um, I'm still just going to program it up with the code for my particular layout. As you can see though, this time I've got the touch screen and the touch screen is sitting over a set of near pixels. And so what I'll do in the tutorial after this, I'll show how to add the various uh, other items so that you can build the full controller. So that's where we're aiming for. I hope that's been useful explaining how the now rail system sort of works with the capacitive touchscreen. As you can see, it's very simple, very, very little wiring. That's what I love about it, very little wiring. So I hope that's been useful to you. And if it is, please click the like and subscribe. And if there's any particular items that you want to know more about with now rail, just please stick a comment in the video and uh, I'll get back to you on it. Bye for now.